Hello, you wonderful people, and welcome to another episode of Super Fantify. This being a show where I talk about TV shows of the supernatural, fantasy, and or science fictional genre. For today's episode, I'm going to talk about the latest episode of Supernatural. A lot of really interesting things went down in this episode, so let's break it down. Obviously, Sam and Dean still dealing with the fact is that they kind of have, you know, kind of have the whole being normal thing. And obviously, they're trying to obviously track down what Garth had brought up last episode. Because obviously, for them, it's kind of, they, they once again, they have to fix this situation. Because as they are now, they already had a tough time going up against God before. But in the state they're in now, there is no winning against them in this form. So, obviously, um, they're low on money. Literally only having enough money to get a cup of coffee and a slice of pie. And they had to split it, you know, so... But um, they end up learning about this place. It's basically like, hey, you go there for, you know, luck and stuff like that. But if you, that's if you win. Now, if you lose, well, bad stuff happens to you. And we see at the beginning, we kind of get an idea of how the place ends up working. You feel so bad for, well, his home dude's name at the beginning was his name Leonard. You kind of feel bad for the poor bastard flipping the coin and then taking a step back and wham by a semi. Uh, That really uh, sucks. But nevertheless, Sam and Dean make their way to this place. And it's an interesting place because obviously, once again, you know, based on the intro, we kind of learned that it is a place that you play for luck. Basically, you bet your luck. I, I'm curious what their luck looked like before the whole Chuck thing. Like, I wonder, like, if you, if they, if Sam and Dean had come in there, like, back when Chuck was still kind of quote unquote looking out for them and kind of made them special, made them shine, like, what would those coins look like? It'd probably be brimming with that there'd be like god levels of luck and stuff instilled in him i thought obviously for dean he's like let me do this because it's a pool game and everything and the fact is i'm i'm good at it i've been hustling people you know ever since i was a kid with this you know he's like you're good at a plenty of things uh sammy and you know like you know i'm not mad about it the fact is i'm very proud of it. hey this no one can beat me at this so obviously uh sam uh, sits out but and dean ends up you know winning you know, uh, he is actually really good at this. But Sam's just kind of like the whole place doesn't make sense to him. Because basically it seems like he's trying to figure out like how this place works. Because he's wondering basically is, are there any hex bags around. Because he's wondering if this is like a witch operation or something. But it seems like it isn't. So he's trying to understand like how this place works. And obviously, you know, Dean does a few games and ends up getting up a little luck. He ends up get, uh, get, uh, going up against the uh, cowboy uh, from the beginning of the episode. And I was like, oh, this is going to be bad. Because I started thinking, like, he was going to be the main antagonist of the episode or something. I thought, like, oh, he's the one running the operation. But it's like, no, he's just another player. Because it's actually sad because uh, I think her name is Evie. She's a lady that's kind of running the bar and everything. She brings up the fact is literally everyone is in there for different reasons. They're not bad people. They're just they needed more luck for their different reasons. But the fact of the matter is they didn't walk away while they were ahead. And then they just kept sinking lower and lower. And now they're just here. So it is a sad situation because it also shows you that they are holding on to scraps of um, luck. Because obviously Leonard lost all his luck and it ended up getting tossed out. That's a terrifying thing to think about, losing all of your luck. That's uh, that's extremely scary to think about. I mean, hence why Leonard ended up dying. It's, I'm, I'm wondering what the ratio would be from like just having bad luck, kind of having little luck left to know like how much that disparages from having a little luck to having no luck. Like how much, how great is that valley? You know, in the grand scheme of things, I think, I think that's just kind of an interesting thing. You never, it's it's something to kind of get caught up in, like the calculations and stuff like that. I don't know if, I mean, really hard to calculate that, but it seems like you technically can calculate. But regardless, Dean was winning. Uh, he ended up winning against the Cowboy, who literally he's like, oh, I won another year because of all this luck, and he was dying from cancer, which sucks. And even Dean was like, oh man, that sucks. I actually like that, you know, uh, leathery bastard, you know. Um, cause that's what I thought was going to be like, oh, he was like, oh, double nothing. I was like, oh, don't do it, Dean, don't do it. And Dean one was like, oh, I, at first, cause I was like, oh, that's easier than I thought. I thought this was going to be something, but he was like, ah, oh, you can't, you know, basically you can't BS a BS or like, uh, you can't con a comment because it's like, you know, Dean's very good at his game too. So bluffing and doing his thing wasn't going to work against Dean. Um, uh, but obviously the luck he got wasn't enough because the car was still having issues. So it's like it doesn't make any sense because that dude has been racking up a whole bunch of luck. So it should have come to Dean. But it's like that's not the case. And then Sam figures it out. It's because the person running all this is skimming the luck off the top. And that's a, a Roman goddess Fortuna. Um, and so it turns out uh, Brax, 
uh, the dude that kind of sets up the games is her son. Well, I guess like, well, it turns out he's like half human. So uh, the fact of the matter is, it's interesting. The lady that he ended up, uh, Dean ended up playing against earlier in the episode, ended up being Fortuna. And so in a certain situation, and it's, that's got to be a bummer when she's like, ah, go ahead and kill him. I can always make more. I'm like, oh, he's like, because even, even her son's like, mom. And even they're looking like, geez, that's a little heartless. And, you know, Dean ends up letting him go. But, uh, it's interesting, uh, her whole situation. Basically, she's hoarding luck. Um, and it's interesting when we kind of learn the ins and outs of kind of why she did that. But I'll, I'll get to it soon. Enough. Sam, she she doesn't really want it. She's not interested in Dean, but she's interested in Sam. She sees something in Sam like, oh, you could be interesting. So she challenges him to a game. At first, Sam was like, all right, I challenge you for everyone in here like to be able to let them go. But she was like, no, you play for your luck, and that's it. And it's like, all right, fine. And so they do. And we should get some interesting talks. It's like, oh, so why are you playing for luck? Is it this or that? It's like, uh, because we're cursed by God. It's like, well, yeah, life is kind of a bitch like that. And it's like, no, we are literally cursed by the God. And she's like, oh, you've had a run into him? You know, like, and then Dean is like, short. Uh, what was the... Uh, uh, terminology he used for uh, Chuck, I forgot. And, but then, like, Fortuna was like, yep, yeah, that's him, all right. And I really love that. I feel like we never really get this, like, explanation. Because, I mean, Sam and Dean have crossed paths with gods before. I mean, to be fair, they've never, they've met, obviously they met Chuck way back in the day. But they didn't reckon, they didn't meet Chuck as god until season 11? I think that's when it was like, wait, you're Chuck? Wait, Chuck, you're God? Wait, what? That, so it wasn't till late in the game, so they probably wouldn't have had time to really bring up those questions. Because like I said, they've met gods. They literally met, because Gabriel was pretending to be, Lo well, he pretended to be Loki, but obviously there was, like, he was kicking it with other, you know, um, other gods. But nevertheless, she brings up the fact is of, like, you know, it's like... They're not the only ones that are kind of in an issue with, you know, it's like joining a club with people who are basically being screwed over by God. And they're, and then the questions start coming up. Well, why is that? What do you mean? Well, it turns it's like it's like God didn't make us. You humans did. Well, technically. And she broke it down. And I thought it was such a fascinating discussion that basically God obviously created everything. The first people to kind of rise up uh, exist, you know, uh, they prayed to different objects. So like the sun, the rain, whatever the case may be. It's like, oh, we're thankful for the sun for shining. And obviously God, obviously we know God, Chuck, is a very petty dude. Like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Where's my recognition? Especially because he's the author that he thinks he is. And he's like, oh, I'm so great. I'm so creative. No, no, no. Worship me. Which is obviously interesting because that same line of and thinking could definitely fit for pre uh, God from Preacher as well. But it's kind of like, no, no, no. Worship me. You're not worshiping me. You're thinking all these other objects. So he created other gods of these particular things for the purpose of making it so that other people could falter for it. So basically it's like, oh, a crop doesn't work well. We blame this specific God. That's why he created them to kind of be a buffer of like, yeah, blame them. And then like, he can get all the praise. And I love that she's like, oh, he bounces to whatever uh, religion is syndicating. And I'm like, ah, little winks and nods. I, I like that because I mean, in the grand scheme of things, life is his television show, uh, you know, and everything. So I just thought that was such an interesting, you know, conversation in the grand scheme of things. And it's like, because he's going up doing his own thing, bouncing from religion, it kind of leaves them with the scraps. It's, and it's to me, it's always that fascinating thing about gods. Basically, gods get stronger the more you believe in them. And so they basically they have to kind of like dig for scraps and just kind of feeding off of people. Obviously, her whole thing is luck. So obviously, she's got to basically scam people of their luck. And obviously, that's why she kind of skims off the top because it's like, eh, no, I'm going to take this just because it's like, if I don't, I'm not going to get it any other way because no one's just going to pray to me. Like, because like the only God that gets all the love is, you know, Chuck in the grand scheme of things. So I just thought that was such a fascinating like discussion. And once again, kind of even more insight into how Chuck operates that even gods are like, oh, Chuck, uh, even gods kind of hate him, you know? So that's interesting. Like I said, that conversation just never really uh, come up before. So I just think that's, you know, so fascinating. But obviously, Sam wins and it's kind of like, all right, double or nothing. Uh, but when the time comes, it's like, Sam is like, no, we're not just going to 
go for double. The fact of the matter is we are playing for everyone in here. She's like, you know they're not stuck here. They can go at any point in time. But the fact of the matter is, like, you holding over, holding their luck over them, it's never, it's not going to, you know, but it's like you holding their luck over them is basically making it so if they literally step outside of the place, they're potentially going to die anyway. And they're going to be very wor worse off. But it's like, all right, well, Scissor, you know, they can leave at any time. You're going to restore them all back their luck. So, all the luck that you've stolen from everybody. But, sadly, Fortuna whoops everyone's ass because, obviously, this is her place. You know, because at first I was about to say, literally, she's the luck. She's a goddess of luck. I'm sure, I'm sure she wouldn't even need to use the luck that she's gathered up from everyone else. It's just probably like she oozes luck. This is, you know, it's like, you know, the house always wins. She literally has home court advantage. And once again, the house always wins. So she ends up winning, and it's kind of like, yep, yeah, you shouldn't have gone up against me and walked out. And obviously Sam and Dean are kind of like, well, we can't really go. I was like, oh, man, how are they going to handle it? I actually expected kind of a comeback or something, but it's like, nope, they lost. And so it's like, well, what do we do? But we can't leave all those people there. But then all of a sudden they start walking out. They're like, whoa. And Sam and Dean are like, whoa, this doesn't make any sense. It's like, well, she let us go because she didn't think people like you existed anymore. And it's like, what's that? Heroes. Because for them, they were willing to. And because that's what Sam and Dean do. They help people. They saw people that were in need of help. And it's like, well, we can't leave here. Even with that situation. Oh, we lost. We ain't got no love. But who cares? Uh, we can't just leave those people in. And we got to find some. You know, they were still willing to try. And that's their thing. Like, this, you know. Sam and Dean have always done that over the course of the series, always help people despite, you know, being at a disadvantage. They're literally going up against a god and they're still trying to not even look out for just themselves. They're trying to make sure that everyone else is okay, you know? And she admires that. It's like, and saying, like, it's, instead of playing God's game, you need to, uh, you know, um, force him to basically play your game. So she ends up restoring their luck. It seems like they're back to who they were before God kind of interfered. So they're not extremely lucky, which you can almost, it's, which is once again, a weird thing to say, because it's like, because of Chuck, you can, like I said, you can make the argument they had plot armor. So it's almost like they're back to plot armor luck, which you would think would be extreme luck, but it's, it's, it's extreme luck in certain categories and not so much in others. Like, it's like in certain aspects, you're at your, your gold status, everything else, you're kind of silver whereas normally you'd be bronze you know that's the best way i can kind of put it so i thought that was kind of you know fascinating because it's like oh there's no like winning the lottery but it's like hey no car problems fact of matter is you were able to eat double cheeseburgers back to back without any issues he was like yeah that was a blessing in its own so good to see the boys back in that regard another angle to all of this is uh cassiel uh, getting a call from a cop about like, oh yeah, because I guess Dean had set this up well in advance and I guess he just never had to, I mean, they have been dealing with a whole lot, lot of apocalypse stuff recently. So I guess he's never had time to kind of retract all this stuff. But basically, I guess like I had all these different like police, you know, things around the US, he probably has it set up. So it's like, if you see Jack hit me up and then it's like, but this one particular cop had seen Jack, apparently he had murdered someone. And it, cause I thought it was interesting cause it seemed like Jack killed someone and then ate the heart. And part of me was like, well, cause at first I was like, is that a, you know, are we going to see his eyes look up and it's going to be like a, a, a skinwalker or something like that? A shape, a shapeshifter. Why am I getting into some skinwalker? They're just shapeshifters in this, aren't they? Or shifters? Are they skinwalkers? I, I, I'm, I'm getting confused with my own terminology. That's the problem with like so many like supernatural based things of like you forget the terminology from one show because I'm wondering if I'm blending it with this terminology from another show or not. I thought they were skinwalkers, but now it's like, no, they're just shapeshifters, right? Skinwalkers are in this though, aren't they? Or am I thinking skinwalkers are in something else is what I'm thinking. Like I said, I'm confusing the hell out of myself. Regardless, I thought it was going to be something like that. Cause, but I was like, no, they don't eat people's skin, do they? They just, you know, they disguise themselves. As them, but it's, that's what I was thinking. Because like, obviously, like, when a shifter, they're, when they're on camera, their eyes glow. Kind of like, you know, oh, that's, uh, that's a shapeshifter. But regardless, I'm going to tangent, stuff like that. So you have um, Castillo investigating this. And he looks at the doctor's office and he finds a... Um, uh, what would they call it again? A uh, Grigori uh, blade, which once again, Supernatural will bring up stuff. I'm like, I don't remember what the hell that is at all. But apparently, like they brought it up at the beginning. They're basically angels that feed on people. So that's a whole thing. They're kind of like the elite of elite angels, but they feed on people. Like I said, I don't remember. I legitimately don't remember that storyline at all. Like I was like, I 
is that an episode I missed? Like, because that's what I'm looking at. I'm like, I don't remember that at all. So that's interesting. It's, it's definitely something that it has to have come up so infrequently. It has to be one of those things that's like, oh, yeah, that happened once or twice throughout the entire series. And this is like the third or fourth time that it's getting brought up or something like that. It has to be because I do not remember that. Because I feel like something like that would come up pretty frequently. And I don't remember it. Like I said, not listen, just some I just happened to miss the episodes when that came up or I just it's been so long. I just forgot regardless of this regardless. Uh, Jack went after another one, but ended up getting taken by him. And obviously, Cassio's trying to track him down. And obviously, he's like, well, answer my questions, but you don't want to. And then Jack's not using his powers. I, my mind immediately was like, you're not using your powers because you're trying to store up. Like, you don't want to waste any drops because it's like, yeah, this is your plan. I was like, you're, you're eating these hearts to build up power, which, you know, it turns out to be the case. But I was like, it had to be that you're building up power. Because I was like, the last time we saw you was with Billy. So this must be a whole thing of like, she must need you to gather up a whole bunch of stuff to kind of get prepared for this fight against i would have figured i figured as much would be against god but what was interesting it's kind of like the guy's like oh why are you coming after me and my my other people like why would you do this but then like you know it's like you know oh you know cutting like the way he's cutting jack and hurting him it's like it's only fair and jack's like fair right that doctor he was pretend he was pretending to be a doctor but he was siphoning off he was eating he was sucking down on the souls of the people he was claiming to help and you you um, are actually, you kind of do the same. Well, you're a little different. You feed off of children. So it's like, don't sit here and act like, oh, I'm the monster killing. You guys are terrible people anyway. So it's not like I'm, you know, it's kind of justified, it justify the means. Cassio shows up because it was interesting. It's like, oh, how do you know about this? It's like, well, it's also interesting too because it shows you that Billy, I mean, she is deaf. She's literally got eyes everywhere. That's why I'm always thinking, I think when it's all said and done, like, I think it's going to be interesting. Because once again, I, it's the line I keep going back to. Death said that one OG death, the death that, you know, existed before Billy was like, oh, yeah, uh, even God uh, will die. Like, even God will meet his end to a reaper, you know, in his case, like death, you know. So meaning I think when it's all said and done, Billy is going to be the one that ends up. Maybe not necessarily killing God, but reaping him, you know? So that's when I'm like, oh, yeah, we'll see what ends up happening in that regard. But um, Cassio ends up killing the uh, Gregory, and so it's like, it really is Jack and everything, and reunited. And when Sam and Dean return, it's like, yo, this is Jack. It's Sam runs over and hugs him. Obviously, you don't see Dean do it because obviously it's still complicated, but obviously it's still kind of like, I'm happy to see you. It's like, I wish you would have just hugged him regardless. I mean, you and Cass made up. I was kind of hoping. Well, I mean, he, he's forgiven Jack because obviously like season 14 at the end, like things were good anyway, but you know, he wasn't willing to kill Jack, but still. So now it turns out like, okay, so the reason why he isn't using his powers isn't just to store it. It's just the fact is that if he used him, God would recognize like, whoa, Jack is back. And the fact of the matter is they can't let that happen because, like, they pick now. And I thought that was so fascinating, like, why Billy chose now to do it was because had to wait for God to leave Earth. So it's like everything sadly needed to happen the way it did so that God wouldn't be around. And obviously, uh, um, Jack is saying that he's got to do more. But when it's all said and done, he'll be more powerful and he can kill God, which kind of brings up a theory I had that, you know, so it's an interesting thing because I brought up the theory that maybe when it's all said and done, they might be setting Jack up to become God. But then so I had talked about the fact that Jack's not powerful enough to be God. God's kind of as powerful as he is. So Jack wouldn't be able to do that, you know, but it's like, well, if he beefs up enough doing whatever he's doing, I mean, granted, who knows if that's going to really be enough to kill God. I mean, Billy believes it to be enough. But maybe, like I said, because because Jack is human, it does seem like it's supposed to represent the fact is that he doesn't have, he has a human side of him to balance him out. Whereas, like, God's kind of full of himself. Everything's kind of about him. A lot of angels kind of, kind of be a little self-centered. They don't care about people and just, like, the going down on Earth. But Jack being part human because of what Kelly kind of instilled in him, that those good sides of uh, you know, a human of herself that maybe that could be instilled in Jack that maybe he can, you know, make the world better. Like, because obviously the whole reason why uh, Sam didn't want to let this whole thing go down with God, because it's like if God was removed from the picture, then a lot of he he kind of acted as a, 
uh, buffer for all the darkness in the world. And if he's not there, the darkness goes full blown against the world. So you're going to need a replacement. Like I said, it's setting up chat. Like I said, you know, there's room to disagree on that. But like I said, that that was my thought for a while, and I'm kind of circling back to that thought even more so now. So we'll ultimately have to, you know, wait and see on that uh, front. But uh, yeah, that's. Definitely going to be interesting. I am. I'm even surprised because it seems like well, Chuck is able to finally get free of this world. So I'm curious. I think that's fascinating because it's like well, when it's all said and done, um, you've all kind of trapped here for a while, so you want to be able to kind of go free. But I'm sure when it's all said and done, he's going to want to come back here in Sam and Dean's story. And when it's done, I wonder is there going to be a part of him that's actually sad about the whole thing, and is he going to blow up the earth, this particular Earth and go like, well, I'm starting anew, or go to a different? You know, I'm curious like what that's all going to be about. So. There's also that uh, because of the whole conversation about, you know, um, Fortuna, it does make me think like, which uh, hearing the saying Fortuna just makes me think of Fortuna uh, Entertainment from uh, Tokyo Mirage Sessions, uh, Sharp Effie. Uh, that just it made, it made, it's my brain think of that game. Um, but nevertheless, uh, it makes me wonder, will they team up with other gods? Because obviously there's some gods out there. Who well, at least seen one who has issues with you know Chuck? So who's to say others don't? So it'd be kind of interesting that the Winchesters got aid from other gods as well. But uh, this so I mean they could actually get like if you know Jack being back and everything, it could get them you know um, other forces kind of rallied behind him potentially. You know we'll kind of see, which is also interesting too because it turns out the reason why the empty kind of I guess just had to accept it was because Billy's the one that was hiding Jack out there so that's interesting but it also circled back to like why uh because chuck made it seem like he wasn't scared of jack when it turns out in actuality he was because jack is the son of an archangel he's the first nephilim of his kind nephilim had the potential to be stronger than their parents and i guess because of because of that nature like jack probably also has like a large uh, potential of power, a larger potential of power than maybe a typical angel would be. So, I don't know. Either way, these are some very fascinating elements. I'm curious to see uh, where all this ends up taking us going forward. We will be waiting a while as Supernatural is going on a break and it will be returning on March 16th, which is a Monday. Uh, the rest of the season will be uh, playing out on Mondays when it returns on March 16th. So do keep that in mind. But really, that's all I want to talk about. So the next time we meet, be happy, be safe, love life to the fullest, and enjoy it. Good day and goodbye.